Friends, welcome. Today we're doing an installation video. We get a ton of requests about bottom bracket installations. And we always think it's clear, but then the questions we get are really about the nitty gritty. So I just want to walk you through every step, how we do it at Kobol, how we recommend installing your bottom bracket so that, you know, you can do it to perfection and not crush the bearings in the process. Fun little detail for the bike. We built this as a show bike for Sea Otter Classic one day. Um, it's an intense, we custom painted it and it was made to mimic Aaron Gwynn's cross country bike. So if you imagine Aaron Gwynn, world class downhiller, if he would ever, ever sign up for a cross country race, what would his bike look like? Um, over the years, we've changed a couple of parts, but we made everything sponsor correct. At the time, we had a prototype TRP drivetrain on it that actually for the show, we had to wrap in electrical tape so nobody could see it. It was a blast and I've been riding it since. So luckily it came in my size. Um, let's get started. Remove the crank set, take out the bottom bracket and then we'll reinstall it. We'll take it from there. We set out all the tools needed for these operation. There's a few that you may or may not have at home. There's a few couple of basic ones. Um, this job completely relies on using the correct tools for the job. Please do not try to improvise a bearing press because I've seen many that work to get the cups in the frame and in the process they destroy the, the bearings. And you know, you, you will not notice upon the installation, you will just notice after two weeks when, when your bearings are just running suboptimal. When, when your bearings are worn out and you're wondering why Cole will deliver you bad bearings. This is from a bad installation very often. So. Going through it, we need eight millimeter Allen tool for the crank set, two and a half millimeter Allen tool for the preloader for the crank set. Removal, Park BBT 90 headset remover. Um, this is a punch, unfortunately, impressed with bottom brackets. There's no clean way of getting them out. Uh, so, big, big fat hammer. Giving three hard wax and getting it out probably damages your bottom bracket less than having a small hammer and having to whack it 20 times. The important thing is all Cobalt Bearings products have a step on the inside that is made to catch a punch with the remover. So we'll start working on that. For the installation, big badass bearing press. This is the one you've probably seen at every shop and I can imagine not every home mechanic has it. It's a really expensive tool. The good thing is you buy it once, you can donate it to your children when you go to the, to the next world. Never wears out, so wonderful piece. With that, we've designed bearing drifts. The beauty for these is that they are designed to put zero, zero load on the bearings. Um, you can see that they have an insert that perfectly matches your insert of the bearing. And they have a little recess here on the outside that will avoid the drift touching the inner race and therefore protect the bearing. And then where possible, if the bottom bracket has a cup set up, it will, um, it will put the load only on the cup. So there's no bearing contact at all. These are designed to work with this bearing press. If you want to use Kogel drifts and you have another bearing press uh, with a different diameter on the shaft, that works, just take a little wheel bearing drift, put it in the hole to adjust it to the size of your shaft of your uh, bearing press, and you're good to go. Those are all the tools. Let's get started. Let's remove the crank set, and we'll take it from there. Okay, here are the big tools. I have to say that sometimes bottom brackets can be very tight in the frame. Um, this is a job, if you own a bike shop, when I used to own a bike shop, sometimes we call this an 8 p.m. job. You do it after the doors are closed 
and the customers are gone because it might require a lot of noise and big banging. Typically, your customer doesn't appreciate seeing that done to their bike, but this is the best operation, so uh, let's go. Okay, remover is locked and loaded. You could hear a big pop when, uh, when it expanded and now it's just sitting on the ridge on the inside of the bearing cup and it's ready for us to remove it. Um, if this bottom bracket is really stuck, sometimes it really helps. This frame can take a little bit of pressure, but if you have a friend that can stand on the opposite side and push on it, that, that will severely limit the stress that goes into your frame or seat tube. So depending on how hard or easy it is to remove that cup, I have no idea about this one, so let's see. Quick and easy. Here we are. Bottom bracket came out clean. And uh, we'll try the other side now. Move to the other side. Um, insert it. It's probably a little bit easier to see for the cup to come out. I'm gonna turn the frame a little bit so it doesn't sit near the stand. And same operation. Like I said, better to give it a couple of hard wax with the steel end of the hammer instead of doing 20 wax with the soft end of the hammer. All right, so just to show you, every cobalt bottom bracket on the inside has a lip that covers the bearing and is meant to take a punch. So with that, you do not damage the bearing upon removal. This bottom bracket, we just whacked at it with a hammer. It's still perfectly smooth. So the next step after removing the bottom bracket is to clean everything up, give it a nice and clean finish so we can start everything, make sure there's no dirt in the bottom bracket that can potentially start creaking later on. So, take a little microfiber rag. Uh, shop rags work as well, the, the paper towels, but they're not as absorbent, so usually I prefer to use microfiber. If you don't wanna, if you think they're expensive, you can just toss them in the, in the, in the machine and, and wash them and use them again. Going to the installation, everything is removed. Everything is nice and clean. We checked it. There's no, no sand, no grit inside the bottom bracket. Let's go put everything back together. Since this is a limited edition bottom bracket in gold, and we have no more of these, they're completely sold out. We're gonna be using the same bottom bracket for installation. Uh, normally you would use a, a, a fresh and a clean one. I, I love this bottom bracket. So we're gonna reuse it. I just cleaned it up, not the same uh, as a new one. Let's go. So, for the installation, very important. Officially, we say you can use any grease you like. But if you use any grease you like and it starts creaking, you call our service department, the first thing they're gonna ask you is, did you use aquaproof paste? We call this shut up grease in our office because it will do just that. Do not use it on people, very important. Just on bikes. Um, it's very thick. This grease is designed for the offshore industry. And for that reason, it is salt water resistant. It doesn't degrade over time. So it's perfect for bottom bracket installation, especially on mountain bikes where you go ride through rivers and creeks and do whatever you want. This stuff is magic. So um, we didn't design it. We just bought it from another company and labeled it because it is so good. Uh, let's go put it all together. First, start putting a layer of this grease on the inside of the bottom bracket, both sides. Uh, do not try to use too little. I want to say more is more, but you know, don't, you know the drill. Just keep it in the middle. Okay, now make sure that this is a nice coat. It's all the way around because this is a press fit bottom bracket. The bottom bracket is going to go in in a straight line. So if you put it only at the top of the frame, then there's none at the bottom. If this bottom bracket was threaded, it doesn't really matter as much because you're gonna thread it in anyway. Okay, next up, we're gonna do the same to the cups to make sure that when we press this in, the grease that's in the bottom bracket is gonna be pushed into the frame a little bit. 
So we're gonna make sure there's some on the cup that will slide in with the frame, uh, into the frame. And, and that way we guarantee that between the frame and the cup, there's at least a little bit of grease everywhere. So let's grease this up. Put a nice little coat on there. All right, one cup, let's do the other one. Nice and greasy. You can see how sticky this grease is. And that is what makes it perfect for an installation like this. Sometimes we get questions of people that want to use it in bearings. I would say do not do it unless you want to do some additional resistance training and then take it out for race day and put in something super fast, maybe. Normally we have a different grease for inside the bearings and for installation. So keep an eye out for the aqua proof for the installation. When we start with pressing in the cups, we always recommend to press these cups one at a time. So do not put both of them. You have a little chance of them going in like crooked sideways. So we recommend doing one at a time. Install it, that gives you an opportunity as well internally to align everything with the inner sleeve and make sure that everything goes in perfect and straight. For this reason, we have designed a bearing drift that goes on the cup, but as well a frame guide that fits on the same tool. Um, it is meant to put on the opposite side when you're pressing the first cup, put it on the opposite side so you can put your drift in there and um, you press everything perfectly straight. Every set that you buy from Kogel has two bearing drifts and one frame guide. All right, installing the first cup. Like I said, we're gonna do this one at a time. Push it into the frame, install your drift. You'll note that the bearing drift for SRAM up exactly fits in the cup. And now we're gonna thread this in. We've got everything lined up straight now and we're gonna start pressing. Um, we'll show you in the close-ups when to start and especially what to look for when the bottom bracket is almost pressed in and when to stop. The critical thing is when the shoulder of the cup that little edge here, when that hits the frame, you're done. There's no point, we've seen dozens of mechanics that push that in, then once it touches the frame, they give it an extra nudge for, for extra security, that's exactly where you crush the bearing. So push it in, it will slide into the frame, there is no need for additional pressure. So when you turn in, look for the pressure to ramp up, Look for the grease to start squirting out of the, the little space. Okay, you see this is all smooth sailing. You see it does not require a ton of pressure on the handles. So as we're rolling here, you see we're squeezing, squeezing, squeezing. And at one point you'll see that the grease will start coming out of the little gap. That's when you're almost there. Give it another quarter turn or so. And this is exactly the point where in my hand I can feel the pressure ramp up and we're done. Do not give it an extra nudge, just back off. On to the second cup. We're gonna do the opposite side now. So one cup is just fine. This now gives us an opportunity to look on the inside of the frame, make sure that everything is aligned. We're gonna install the second cup with the same bearing press. I changed the frame guide now for a second drift. So again, this one matches exactly to the cup. Takes all the load off the bearing and only presses the cup in and leaves the bearing alone. That's how you install it very cleanly. Okay, so here we go again. Everything lined up on the inside. And we're ready to press the second cup. All right, all the pressing done. We're gonna back off the, uh, the press, remove everything, and then the bottom bracket installation is done. All right, we'll put this aside quickly, and you see this is all a sloppy mess. Make sure to always keep your tools clean. Uh, we'll put them aside for now, we'll handle that later. We've got everything, bottom bracket installed. 
time to look at the crank installation. Before we start installing it, um, have a look at the preload adjuster. The ones from SRAM are plastic and let me say that I am not a big fan because the thread strip on it is flexible. It doesn't do anything. So out of frustration, we designed a preload adjuster in aluminum. Now, not only is this super solid, also you can color match it to the rest of your parts. It's awesome. Let's go. We get a lot of questions on spacers for dub bottom brackets. So we, um, we always try to give you a very precise answer. Unfortunately, the spindle spacing on dub cranks we found is not very consistent. So it takes a little bit of trial and error. So what I'm gonna do when we install this, we're, I'm gonna give you a starting point and take it from there. So you can set it up perfect. The goal is uh, for a bottom bracket, it's made of radial bearings. So when people talk about preload, a radial bearing actually is not supposed to be preloaded. So you have to adjust it. If it's too loose, you'll notice that your crank will be rocking like this because there's spacing on the spindle. If it is too tight, you'll notice that the bearing uh, friction will just ramp up like crazy. So we're gonna find the exact middle point between that. We're gonna do that with the four millimeter spacers that are in your uh, bottom bracket and the 1.8 millimeter spacers that uh, once we found the perfect point, we're gonna do the fine tuning with the preload adjuster to get you to that perfect setup where you have no play and the lowest possible friction. Let's go. For the spacers, we have two different widths. In every dub bottom bracket, you will find one four millimeter spacer. That's a wider one that goes on the drive side. And you'll find some skinnier ones to uh, build up your spacing correctly and make sure that you have the correct chain line. Um, since we just took this apart, I know we're gonna need one of these and one of these. We'll walk you through the process. I'll do it wrong first, so you can see afterwards uh, how we get to this perfect setup. Before we start the installation, we're beginning with more aqua proof. A lot of creaking in bottom brackets is from the interface between the crank spindle and the, and the bearing or the bearing insert. So let's grease this all up. More shut up grease, everybody happy. So as we're doing this, I put the grease on both the bearing seats as well on the splines where the, uh, the opposite crank arm is going to sit and we're going to put some on the threads on the inside of the spindle. Make it a nice thin coat, make sure it's uniform so the grease is everywhere. If you have to choose between too little and too much, please go with too much. It will push it out and we can wipe it up later. So we're going to install the uh, crank set now. We've put a little layer of grease on all the uh, parts that make contact with the bottom bracket. We're going to start with the four millimeter spacer on the outside on the drive side. While you're doing this, make sure that the, uh, the preload adjuster is in a completely retracted state so you can use it later to take up any additional space. As I'm going to install this crank set, it is a threaded system so you'll notice that once I put it on, everything might be nice and loose. Once we tighten the bolt, actually the spindle gets a little bit shorter as a result of that. So that is the point where we're gonna be looking if something is getting squeezed and increases the friction. Let's go. Okay, this is just hand tight now. It's not fully torqued yet because we're just trying to gauge the, the, the spacing. Bottom bracket is installed now. I already know it's missing a spacer. So let's have a look. Grab the crank set and pull it out and you can see that it's rocking back and forth. This means that we're gonna take up a little bit of that space with an extra spacer. Remove the crank set again. Okay, nice thing about the aqua proof get braced is that it also keeps your spacer in check because it is that sticky. So, once again, preloader is completely retracted to so we can, we're able to use it later on and, and take up the last little bit of space. I'm gonna add the 1.8 millimeter on spindle right now. We're going to install it again.
Everything is nice and smooth now, but we haven't torqued the bolt yet. So I'm gonna tighten it up and see if there's any change. This is how fluid it should be. Okay, bolt is fully tight. I didn't have a torque wrench, the setting is 45 Newton meters. But uh, yeah, if you have many years of experience tooling on bikes, you can feel a little bit of that pressure. Uh, you can gauge it on, on big bolts with big numbers. I wouldn't try to estimate a five Newton meter or bolt on a, on a stem with a carbon frame. Please use a torque wrench for those. All right, still smooth. Now we're gonna see if there's still a rocking sensation in there. So I'm gonna grab the crank set again. I'm gonna to try to rock it back and forth. I can feel a little bit of play. It's probably not even enough to see it. So that last little bit, we're gonna take up with the, with the preload adjuster. Two millimeter Allen wrench, let's go. There's a pinch bolt here. Release it a little bit. Now we can adjust this preload adjuster. And what we're gonna do from fully retracted, once you thread this, it's going to expand like this. So we're gonna get this to the point where it expands and we can feel again that the pressure ramps up. That's where it touches the frame or the, the bottom bracket and we're done. So turn it a little bit. You can move either the crank or the preload adjuster and here you can see that my thumb starts moving. I'll do that again. Hold the preload adjuster. I'm moving the crank right now, but you can twist the preload adjuster as well. And you'll see at one point now the crank starts pushing my thumb. That's the exactly perfect, perfect point. Tighten the pinch bolt. Make sure this doesn't move again. And we're ready to clean this up. So, there we have it. Installation, step by step, really pointing out the details of what to look for. I hope this helps. Most videos do not go into that minute detail of really telling you what to look for. So those little hints and best practices, I hope that was really good for you. Time to clean everything up. Yeah, he was raving, raving about our Acroproof paste, but it's got one big downside. It's sticky and it gets everywhere. So please, while you're working on it, as you're cleaning up your fingers, do the same for your bike. Um, everywhere where you touch it with your hands, if you have grease on it, please clean this all up because this stuff is a magnet for dust. So if you don't do it right now, you're gonna have a mess when you come back from your first ride. Come on. Okay, that's our wrap up. Installation bottom bracket, step by step. I hope you learned something. If you want to see more of this content, please hit the subscribe button and keep an eye on our Kogel Bearings channel on YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, whatever, how you prefer to consume your content.